We're going to start off tonight's show a little, a little different. We're going to play a game. It's to where we're going to test your skills. And tonight, we're going to test your skills by wondering if you know what to do when a teacher confiscates your phone. Do you think you know what ha will happen if your teacher takes away your phone? We're going to show you a clip from Law by Mike. And along with that, we're going to give you some, you're going to see multiple choice answers. And you and Hulk, and as always, you and Hulk are playing along. If we had a studio audience here, they could play along as well by doing a little reenactment. But since we don't have a studio audience here, it's interactive. So let's take a look at this. Ignore school policy when they comp. Mr. Beast legally. Teachers often ignore school policy when they confiscate phones. You could lose your phone if you don't know what to do. Let's make sure you're ready by testing your skills and see if you can get your phone back. Caught you, buddy. Hand over the phone. Thank you. Don't be confrontational. Teachers can confiscate phones, and being combative could cause you to lose your phone for longer. Hey, what's the passcode? I need to see what's so important. Ugh, worth a try. Teachers usually can't make you unlock your phone unless they have reasonable suspicion that you committed a crime and evidence of that is on your phone. Whatever then, say goodbye to your phone for the rest of the year. Teachers are not allowed to confiscate phones indefinitely because it's not their property. Hey, what do you want? Yeah, school policy says you're only allowed to take my phone until the end of the period. Oh, fine. Mr. Eckham, can we see you in the principal's office, please? Switch! Teachers often ignore school policy when they confiscate phones. You could lose your phone if you don't know... For those that set F off and gave out the passcode, didn't stay silent, you guys are idiots. Listen. This is the whole reason why phones are not allowed in class and why texting is not allowed. I mean, look up videos on no phones in class. Just take a look at this. Take a look at this thing. Smell. This was seen on MTV from Ziploc Fresh. Almost nine and a half thousand, nine and a half thousand views. Hey, look. You. Shit. Not. You. Yes. Yeah. Cellular. Devices. Or. Pagers. Dirty. Class. You. Need. To. Turn. Off. Your. Cellular. Devices. Before school. You. Shit. Only. Use. Yeah. Cellular. Devices. Before school. At lunch. Or. After school. If. You. Are. Caught. Using cellular devices during class. It will e immediately confiscated if you refused to give up your cellular devices right. And get your attention. Mm. 
then this this can help Wix is your platform to perform on Today's lesson is attention during class. Johnny, if I see that phone again, you're going to have consequences. This is your last warning. Okay, okay. Jeez, I was just texting my mom. <clears throat> I said no. no. Don't use your phone in class. You got the message? I hope this this all the six minutes would help. No phones in class. Again, don't use your phone in class. It's common sense. How would your team feel? How would your team feel after getting your first driver's license? Think about it. As a parent, you would get your driver's license, you get your child and check his driver's license, you give them the keys to the car, they drive off, and you're scared about what would happen. We're going to show you some hidden camera examples from Manly Morales. This is My Kid Would Never Do That series, all about driving. And then, I mean, basically, this whole hour is going to be all, this whole two hours is going to be all about driving. So, you'll see as it goes along from Kenny Jeffries and Manly Morales. Stay with us. It's not often that we do a Give Me a Break all about driving. But this is very important and very educational for you. So for the next few hours, so for the next hour and a half, 90 minutes, I need your undivided attention because this could really help save your life. I mean, not using, not using a blinker, left lane laggers, even traveling with children, sleepy drivers. Maybe later on, we're going to show you a hidden camera experiment from Natalie Morales all about teens and driving. But let's focus on some of the very important things. Driving distracted, the blinker, left lane laggers, and bad parkers. And we're going to learn all this from driving me crazy. So here's Katie Jeffries. To start off, on, it starts off with left lane laggers. Because you're probably one of those people. The new dollar ninety nine. You're not one of those left lane laggers. Rat laggers. Time in full flavors. Like Good for you. So I want to talk about something that is really driving me crazy. Left lane laggers. I cannot with you people. Now before you jump on me and say that I'm advocating speeding, I am not advocating speeding. <clears throat> I'm just saying. Don't be a lane hog and have some common decency for your fellow drivers. You may think that you're fine, like just cruising down the left lane, but everybody around you is having to weave in and out to get around you. And I could quote statistics at you, but anyone who has driven for more than five minutes could tell you the more you change lanes, the more likely it is that someone will have a crash. So if slower traffic stays to the right, the faster cars can then pass on the left, and then move back over into the right lane. Wouldn't that be nice? It is actually considered a non-criminal moving violation, and you could be fined between $151 and $165. So on behalf of the Jacksonville community, left lane laggers, please change your ways. And you can change your ways. All right. She's got more. Let's look at those bad parkers. The new, new dollar ninety nine Sonic Crispy Tender Wraps are here for a limited time in bold flavors like hickory. So I think I actually have something this week that we can all agree on. Whether you are Democrat or Republican, black or white, dog person or cat person, if you park like this, you are a jerk. There are just certain unspoken rules that help govern us as a society. Stay between the white lines when you park. But when you park like this, it's anarchy. And I can't take it. I have a working theory that the people who park like that are the same people who don't tell you thank you when you hold the door open for them. If 
It's untested, but I think I'm on to something. I mean, look at this picture. You are in the middle of four different handicap spots. How does that even happen? Parking in a handicap space is a $250 fine, and I hope that person had to pay it four times over. Or people that park so close that you literally can't even get in your car. You have to climb in through the other side like some ninja having to straddle the gear shift to try to get to your side. I wasn't in the Olympics. I'm not flexible enough for this. As fascinating as it is to watch privilege in action, please use the eyes the good Lord gave you and park like a decent human being. And you want to park with your ugly baby bean after all. Now let's go to driving in the rain. Trust me. There's, yeah, there's nothing more powerful than right you. One. Making your thing happen. Even if you're in a jacket. It's really going. Okay. Guys. Okay. Guys. I just need to get something off my chest. Why is it? that Jacksonville drivers cannot drive in the rain. We live in Florida. It is a peninsula. It is surrounded on three sides by water. But by God, if one drop of water touches the roadway, it is like Lord of the Flies on the roadway. Haven't you seen rain before? I mean, we have alligators that live in the lakes in our backyard. That doesn't rattle us. But one drop of water on the pavement, it is straight survival of the fittest out there. Like, honestly, what is going through people's minds? I think we should do 80 on cruise control. Yeah, I know it's a green light, but I'm going to stop anyway and watch everyone else skid out. I mean, really, guys, we survived two hurricanes within a year. We can do better. Also, please stop driving with your hazard lights on. A, it's illegal in Florida to do that. And B, if you don't feel safe, get off the road. Don't, like, wait in a parking lot because it's Florida. In 10 minutes, it'll be sunny again. So the next time we have a downpour, a gully washer, frog strangler, please drive like you've seen rain before. It's rain. Come on, guys. It's freaking rain. We're crying out loud. It's rain. It's water. Water. The thing we drink. And you Jacksonville's like, oh my god, there's much water out there. Survival of the fittest. Go to the grocery and start getting Get toilet paper. <laughs> Get toilet paper. <laughs> oh my god, I'm all just chewing up here. <laughs> Get toilet paper, we'll get some milk. It's rain, oh my god! Survival of the fittest out there! <laughs> what is wrong with you? It's rain, it's water! Stop acting like it's the freaking end of the world! It's water! Rain from the sky falls down! It's water! Come on, for crying out loud! It's not like it's the end of the world! It's not! It's just water! It's a liquid! The second state of matter. Common sense. Don't act like it's freaking COVID all over again. Oh my God, water. So far, the little fetters ever made for himself. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, so we dealt with left lane laggers, drivers in the rain, bad parking. When we return, it's all about the one thing that nobody knows. Using your blinker. And with school coming back after spring break, it's all about back to school traffic. And later on, a test. A test of knowledge from Nelly Morales' hidden cameras of... Mike would never do that. Don't go away. There is one thing that drivers don't often use, and it's on your left hand side. Your blinkers! Your blinkers! The little thing goes.
I'm sorry. You gotta use it. It could save your life. It could really help save your life. Once again, Katie Jeffries. So I've gotten a ton of requests to do a video about using your blinker. And frankly, it took me a while to come up with this one because I didn't know what to say. It takes the most minimal amount of effort possible. You just hit it. If you can't handle that, I want you to take your license out of your wallet, put it in a trash can, light that trash can on fire. You don't deserve it. It's not like an optional thing. It's the law. But when I look around... But I think I see a lot of law breakers up in this house. I mean, seriously, how many of you are communication majors? But you can't communicate to me that you want to change lanes? But I'll stop. The blinker was actually invented in 1929 by this guy named Oscar Simler. But still, no one knows how to use it. How disappointed do you think he would be to find out that people nowadays would rather die in some fiery crash than move their wrist slightly? And using your blinker as you're changing lanes, that doesn't count. Because I, as a fellow human on the road with you, need a moment for my eyes to see your blinker and then let that register back through my optic nerve into my cerebellum. So I can then say, oh, this guy needs over and then let you over. Give me a second. Here's one more thing. Nobody respects the blinker. When you do use it, people try to cut you off. But how rude, man. I was trying to let you know that I need it over and now I can't get in. So don't complain about the blinker if you don't respect the blinker. And frankly, if you can't handle using a turn signal, linker, whatever you want to call it, get off the road. You shouldn't be there. Like Katie said, you don't want to use the freaking blinker. Get your license, put in the trash can, burn the trash can, feed it to the dog, hush him up with, mix it, take it in, mix it with that hush puppy batter. He'll hush him up, he'll show about the blinker. Hush puppy, eat that hush puppy. <laughs> oh God. It's a, it's a little thing. Look, I get it now. You don't know how to use your blinker. Get yeah, the pet peeves about driving. It may take me today and tomorrow to talk about this. It's like, where did you get your license from? A cereal box? Or do you have to take a test? Here's a portion of... Here's a portion from Rob. For, I'll put the video link in the description below. I mainly talked about how drivers have no idea how to use a blinker. I want to talk about other points that I didn't mention in my previous rant in this one. And for demonstration purposes... We're going to start off talking about the specific drivers who have no clue which lane to pick. You see them like swerving in between the lanes and they're driving right on the line. You're behind them like, um, pick a lane. I'm trying to go around. I don't know what you're doing. I can imagine these people who do this in their car like, should I pick this lane or that lane? I mean, both these lanes are, it's kind of, you know, we'll just swerve like this. We'll just... We'll just swerve in between. I don't know what the fuck they're thinking. Just pick a lane, man. Now my next point. Drivers who drive way too slow, but specifically during traffic hour, like you're stuck at a red light. I'm the kind of driver who, as soon as it turns green, I'll accelerate, man. You got a car, use it. People take their fucking sweet ass time. Like it just changes green and they're just like, <laughs> by the time they go, and the other slow drivers, you know, like behind them, only three cars pass that intersection until it turns fucking red again. It takes 20 minutes to cross one block. Thanks, fuck face. And the women, I have so many videos of this. They just put on their, they just have to put on their makeup in the car. If you're a woman and you're... That's all I want to point out here, bro. Basically, it's common sense. Don't even freaking think about it. All right, we're going to do a couple more of this and then we're going to move on. All right, let's talk about the back to school chart. Now, back to school, now, kids are going to go back to school after spring break. And 
For those that do not know all about the back to school traffic, it is a must see. Time of year again. Back. It is a must see. So it's that lovely time of year again. It's really a must see for y'all. You don't know? Listen to Katie Jeffries. So it's that lovely time of year again. Back to school means back to traffic. And for all the kids complaining about going back to school, I'm right there with you. We like traffic a lot better when you were in school. Hashtag bring summer back. But for parents, it is like Christmas come early. It's the most wonderful time of... It is astounding how like your 20 minute commute can suddenly be an hour overnight and everybody's in a hurry. But I don't care how busy you are, you stop for school buses. Like it's not even hard. Two lane road, stop. Multi lane road paved all the way across, stop. It's freaking driving 101. And if for some insane reason you get it in your head that you should pull something like this, just know that either the cops or an angry mob of mothers will find you. Pray the cops find you first. And let me give you another tip. Some people are afraid of trucks out there on the roadways. Not me. The cars that I find to be the scariest are the ones with these on the back because these are not stick figure families. These are battles fought. These cars will pull over at any moment. If someone in the back needs an attitude adjustment, you get out of those cars way because inside of those cars, there's probably screaming, somebody's throwing food. Another kid's probably about to vomit. It's like a 2 a.m. rager in those cars all the time. So you get out of their way. You let them in and you let them pass you because parents in those cars are not about to take any of your sh And that leads me to the holy grail of back to school traffic, the drop off line. Woo! My God. I I'm not even a parent, y'all. I'm just thinking about it makes me sweat a little bit. Guys, everybody in the drop off line has the same goal. Let's zipper merge in and get little Timmy off to school. This is not the time for tying shoes. Do you have everything in your backpack? Did you forget your lunch? Not the time, Susan. Get your kid out of the car and then move along. You have about an eight second window to get your kid out of the car before everybody in the line behind you straight up mutinies and then they talk smack about you at the PTA bake sale. And frankly, the quicker you can get your kids out of the car, the quicker you can get some peace and quiet. So look out for kids, school buses, and if you live in Nocatee, golf carts. But hey, it won't be like this forever. Eventually, summer will roll back around. It'll just be like nine months. I'm sorry. Nine months from now, it'll be summer. Here's one thing. One thing you need to do before you... Now it's all about driving distracted. And before we point this, yes, this is going to be a two-day thing. Today we're going to deal with driving me crazy from Katie Jeffries. Then tomorrow we're going to start off with Nellie Morales. And we're going to conclude with Nellie Morales. So this is going to be a two-day thing. So I really need you guys, y'all's undivided attention here. Because these tips can really help you out. Especially when you're driving distracted. This one right here is common sense. No texting and driving. You want to text, you pull over to the side of the road. You want to, you can't eat and drive at the same time. I mean, I can, I'm a great multitasker. I can even eat, sure, I can even eat while talking, while doing the show. I can even drink while talking, while talking to y'all. I can even play a game while I'm talking to y'all. I'm a good multitasker, but I'm not one of those multitaskers that just freaking gets in the car and just text and drive. I mean, these videos are the reasons why I don't want to drive. I don't want to go to a driver's ed, get my license, get behind the wheel, because I'm afraid I'm going to be like one of these people. We need these driving courses. And frankly, these videos could really be helpful. And this episode, and these two episodes can really be helpful. Katie, take it away. Talk about something that is getting seriously out of hand. Distracted driving, specifically texting and driving. Let's be honest here. Most of us can't even walk and text. Y'all are out here walking into fountains, walking into walls. I mean, come on. You actually think that you can text and drive? Get out of here. 
Also, I cannot get enough of these videos. Thank God for security cameras. Listen, if it stresses you out to see your Uber driver text while they're driving you, you shouldn't be doing it either. One star. If you call someone out on it, the response sometimes you get is, I do it all the time. I don't know what you're freaking out about. Um, excuse me, what? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! What are you even saying that's so important? Like, you're not Gandhi out here about to drop some life-altering quote. You're talking about whatever stupid drama is going on, or you're just sending emojis. That is not worth dying for. While I'm on it, can y'all please stop Snapchatting yourself singing the lyrics in your car? I'm gonna start reporting you to the insurance companies. So I thought that texting and driving was the worst thing that you could do. But then we ran this story. One third of Americans who have shopped on their mobile devices admit that they've done it while driving. What? Why are you online shopping in the car? Do it when you get to work. Waste your company's time, not your own. I just don't understand. This is getting ridiculous. I need to bring in a professional. All right, so we have Deputy Chris Padgett here, Clay County Sheriff's Office. What is the worst thing you've ever seen behind the wheel? I saw a person holding a hamburger in one hand, a cigarette in the other, while leaning down to take a drink of their big gulp that was in their lap. That's a lot of flavor, all in one, yeah. like... It's a bad mixture. They actually wind up swerving into the bicycle lane. Needless to say, they got stopped and spoken with after that. What is the punishment if you get pulled over? The primary offense is going to be whatever we stopped you for, such as in, in that person's case, uh -huh. uh, going into the bike lane recklessly. And then distracted driving can be a secondary offense in the state of Florida. It can be a citation. It can be going to court. There can be different you know, things that occur based on the infraction that you committed. While I'm here, can I tase anybody? Can I hit any of the buttons in here? Where do y'all get your hats? We get them from the boot barn. <laughs> no, the you barn. don't. We do. They're specially made, though. They're specially made, specially ordered just for our deputies. This has been fun. Thank you. Uh, well, thank you for being part of driving me crazy. Thank you very much, Chris. And before someone even types it in the comment section of this video, let me address one thing. I know people are going to say, well, police and deputies are on their phones and computers while they drive all the time. Yeah, they're allowed to be because they're, they're trying to get information about whatever situation they're trying to get to while still probably dealing with whatever crisis they just left. But they are also required to drive safely as well. So chill out. Stay in your own lane. Parents, bring it in here for a second because I think I actually might have a solution that you could use for your kids. Whenever they get a car, make sure it's a manual transmission. They need both hands and all their brain cells to work that. They won't have time for texting or else they're gonna roll backwards down a hill. Boom, problem solved. But seriously, parents, you need to stop texting in your cars as well. Grow up, Karen, set an example. Let me wrap this up by saying, if not killing yourself or hurting someone else is enough of a motivator for you to not drive distracted or to not text and drive, let me just say this. Saying that your driving is the perfect excuse to not have to talk to anyone. If someone's mad that you didn't text them back, oh, I'm sorry, I was driving. It's a perfect excuse that nobody can get mad at. So enjoy some peace and quiet. Put down your phone, focus on what you're trying to do, and drive like you actually deserve that license. By taking driver's ed, you think you had enough? You want, you want, you guys, y'all want to take a break? Y'all want to take a break from this? We're not taking a break from this, but we are going to take a break. And we'll be right back with more of this driving be crazy s madness. I don't even know how to say this. Let's take a break. Next, it's all about the road rage. Yeah, basically, it's all about you know, when you're driving and you like saying, Fuck you! Get out of my spot! Katie's gonna come back with that after the break. When we come back, stay with us. Are you kidding me? You better not be kidding me. Road rage. We've all seen it happen. I mean, you're in an accident and it's like, come on, guys, move it. I'm going to be 30 minutes late. I think you're like, 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 work. Sorry, I'm late. I was in road rage. What? I was in road rage. You got to be kidding me. You give me a take. Y'all got to take it. Y'all got to take a note from Kitty Jeffries. And Elsa. Katie? So let's take this video and talk about road rage. Admit it. You learned all of your best curse words from your parents in the car. They were like Vincent Van Gogh. The road was their canvas and curse words were their paintbrush. I don't know if it's the heat down here because our road rage is out of control. Listen, 
We are all Florida drivers, which means we're all terrible. You put us in a car, and suddenly we're like Sandra Bullock in Bird Box trying to drive. Are there other cars? I can't see. Oh, you saw me, and you cut me off anyway. But I really just need to calm down. I need to take a note from Elsa. Make a, make a mad when people cut me off yeah but do i want to get shot or do i want to go to jail not really real talk for a second too many people have died or gotten run off the roads because of road rage incidents we all just need to chill we're basically in metal boxes flying down the roads sometimes things are gonna happen okay deal with it and hey we learned this when we were young look what road rage did to corella deville it ages you and it might make you hate puppies easy things that you can do to make a difference first of all use your blinker do you even know where it is i'm looking at you karen don't be a left lane lagger don't tailgate people and if there is one thing that we learned from the kentucky derby this year it is to stay in your lane Look, I'm not here to give you a sermon. I am not perfect. I have said and done some things that were really stupid. Example, this is a true story. So a few years ago, I was on Atlantic Boulevard, okay? And I was at a stoplight, and this guy came up and was like banging on my window, yelling that I had cut him off, which I didn't but whatever. So he's yelling, and then he says that he's going to kill me. My response was, no, you won't. There's far too many witnesses. Oh my God. Could not have had a worse response. I can't believe I said that. I'm an idiot. So after that, I've really tried to take it down a notch. There's no need to yell or hand gesture at people. There's really no scenario in which this ends well. And really, you don't feel better at the end of the day afterward. If you can, try not to react at all. I know you have to have the self-control of a saint, but try. As much as I wish I could be like Bruce Almighty and Part the traffic, it's just not gonna happen. So chill, maybe do some yoga breathing, and realize that not everything that people do on the road is malicious. Some people are just bad drivers. Be nice. Be nice to all the drivers. I mean, you may be angry at first, but they, you may cut you off, and you go like, you come a young motherfucker. I can't take a no from Elsa and from Jeffries. Just let it go. Chill. With a chili cheese dog. Chill out. Do some yoga practice. Just take a breather while you're eating a chili cheeseburger or some chili cheese fries or some chili cheese sauce and even chili cheese nachos. Just eat some chili while you chill. And while you're having trollo. The shits. Oh, God, I got George Lopez in my head. All right. Now let's, uh, let's move on to merging. What is merging? It's just basically all about, like, it's just like left lane laggers, but it's different. You're, like, swerving back and forth. Back and forth. Katie's going to explain. Dude, get out of my lane. Honest question. How are there so many people out there getting a license without the basic knowledge of how to merge? Drop-off lines, construction, on-ramps. We can't handle any of that. Sh like when you're trying to leave the town center, but people are going so slow on the on-ramp to JTB. What are you doing? That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Listen, Janet, you cannot do 35 when merging into a 65. You're going to kill us all. Accelerate, use your blinker, check around you, and then do the courtesy wave. Really, that and opposable thumbs are like all that separate man from beast. You cut over on people, you might get a different type of wave with only one finger in use. The only place I want to see a bird is in the sky or on my dinner plate, not on the roads. Speaking of places you might see birds, school drop-off lines. I don't even have kids. I'm just a bystander in these situations, but I find it wildly entertaining to watch parents tell their kids, be nice, take your turn, and then they cut off the other parents in front of them. No shame, no regret. If your eight-year-olds can figure out how to form a line, you should too. And that brings me to the hotly debated topic of the zipper merge. Gird your loins. This is gonna get intense. So drop off lines, on ramps, you merge like a zipper. You are going on this journey together. And if 
in a rare moment you have that driver that like slows down and lets you in, it's like, oh my stars, marry me. But when you're in a construction zone and you see that lane close signs ahead, oh, it's about to go down. For example, if you go through 295 and Bay Meadows at rush hour, you will encounter two types of people, the early merge and the zipper merge. There is no rivalry more intense on the roads. It's as heated as the political system because both sides think they're right and neither is going to budge an inch. I get the concept of the zipper merge. Everybody moves along, you let each car kind of take turns, and then everybody keeps moving. But here's the thing. In every graphic example ever shown of the zipper merge, they have all the cars traveling at the same speed and everyone lets someone else in. When have you ever seen this happen? What are we, the blue angels? We can't pull off this kind of maneuver. And in reality, the early mergers See, the zipper mergers has line cutters, and nobody likes a line cutter. So then, when the people trying to zipper merge cut over, it causes the early mergers to have to hit their brakes, and then just a traffic backup ensues, and it becomes a freaking mess out there. Ugh. Merging is a beast, and I just don't think we're ever going to all be on the same page about it. It's like a universal truth. Sky being blue, and the San Marco train will make you late. It just is what it is. But if nothing else, can you please at least... Use your blinker and do the courtesy wave. Thank you. And they get you on to get a broom and go, give me a sweep right here. Okay. You sweep up traffic. You might as well, you might as well just be sweeping up traffic while in the nude. I'm, I mean, you have to sweep the traffic. Sweep the traffic. Sweep the traffic. Ugh. Ugh. Oh yeah, that feels good, baby. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, I feel good. <laughs> We're gonna make the bed while you're trying to sweep the traffic. Won't you for that be like Phew. <laughs> Oh my god, well life. I try not to make the show funny, but I am a very funny guy. That's what sets this show going with serious issues and real comedy. <laughs> oh my god. Alright. You got kids in the car? Well, you trying with your kids? Well, you better listen to Miss Jeffries here. I never knew what it was like to have every person around hate me, and then I got on a plane with a baby. Tis the season that we all pack up and go drive to see family, because there is nothing that can bring you together like traveling. It's a rite of passage. And if there is one thing we've learned from Home Alone, it's that you can leave a kid behind. They're crafty. They'll be fine. Whether you go by plane or by car, it's going to be rough. I feel like you deserve some kind of award if you have ever changed a diaper in turbulence. Who designed the changing tables in airplane bathrooms? I'm in there feeling like Zoolander. What is this, a changing table for ants? Quick tip, <laughs> pack extra clothes for the baby and for you. When you think you have enough, pack another. First time we ever took my son on a plane, he was about 10 months old. He threw up on a level I have never seen in my life. In all my years of college, this was unparalleled. He painted the row. It was in my shoes. My shoes. So yeah, you want to bring extra clothes. You don't fly, you can't drive, but that means you're going to be with each other a lot longer. But at least kids now have iPads and tablets and all kinds of things to keep them occupied. You know what we had in the 90s for road trips? I spy with my little eye. My sister and I played that for probably 16 hours going from Kentucky to Florida, and I am shocked that at some point my dad didn't just drive the car right off the cliff. Oh, pack snacks. At least 80% of your problems can be solved by snacks. If nothing else, just remember, the things that go wrong will become legendary stories. Hell, the Griswolds made an entire movie franchise out of it. 
because no one wants to hear about your happy time that you had driving together singing Christmas carols on the way to Grandma's house. I 100% want to hear about how you almost left a kid at the rest stop or how your toddler almost created a national security event by running through the TSA checkpoint. Now that is a memory. <laughs> hey, it could be a memory. <laughs> it might be a memory like, Timmy, come back here. Gotta catch me. <laughs> oh god. Did you travel for Thanksgiving? Now let's take a break. Next, did you travel for Thanksgiving? You better listen to Katie because she might give me these tips for Thanksgiving 2024. Months away. We'll be right back. Are you planning on traveling for the holidays? Or are you planning on are you planning on basically like for Thanksgiving and Christmas or Memorial Day? Plan on doing those things? Well, you know, Katie, you take it away. You just gotta love this time of year. You're gonna get the bird on the table and the bird on the roadways. There's really nothing more American than sitting down to a nice meal with your family, giving thanks, talking about love, then immediately getting in your car and yelling at the other drivers that cut you off. 54 million people are expected to be traveling for Thanksgiving. And where are we go? So if you're driving, first of all, Bring something calming with you. I'm talking a book on tape, maybe some Enya. Anything but Christmas music. That will drive you insane. Listen, a tip though, do not fight in the car in front of your kids. It's not like a parenting thing, but the second that they get to your in-law's house, the first thing they're gonna say is, mommy and daddy were fighting in the car. Sometimes holidays are just about survival. Like if you need to go into the corner and do some shots of fireball, I get it. Because maybe at dinner you were stuck next to your cousin who's now an influencer on Instagram and you have to listen to that garbage all night. Do the shots. Drink all the wine. Make a scene. I don't care. Just don't drink and drive. If you are headed somewhere that's snowy, ooh, bless your heart, Southern driver, let me give you some of the best advice that I ever got about driving in the snow. First of all, you want to put your car in the lowest gear and then drive like you're trying to sneak up on somebody. Kind of like the way you would creep past your ex's house and hope that nobody sees you. Like that. Let's talk air travel. Because if there's one thing we all love, oh, it's the TSA. I am literally baffled that there are people every time I go through the line that just don't know the routine. It's not rocket science, Karen. Take off your jacket, take off your shoes, take off your belt, take that $7 worth of change out of your pocket, put it in the little bin, and shove that thing through the machine. Keep it moving. And if you are traveling alone with kids, you're doing a great job, honey. Don't listen to anyone. As long as y'all get there in one piece, that's all that matters. At least you didn't pull a home alone. Listen, holiday travel can be really stressful, but at least at the end of the day, there's pie. Just don't drink and drive, do not talk about politics, and be nice to your family, because they're the ones that have to put up with your And even other drivers. Bring something irritating with you. Oh. Time to talk about the drop off line etiquette. Just listen to me. There's nothing more powerful I, than you. Make it I feel like Katie Jeffrey should take over this special. What are they doing? Pull forward! So I. What are they doing? Pull forward! I feel like we should have Katie Jeffries take over this. I mean. If, you know what, if I had a second guest, second guest on the show, you'd be, you'd be Katie Jeffries. Think about it. I mean, can you just really think about it? I mean, I would ask her, hey, you want to come on the show for an updated throwback Thursday all about my driving special? Saying the link you want to talk to me. I'm like, she'd be like, sure. And we do a Zoom meeting, all this and this. And I would say, join us now via Zoom is Katie Jeffries. You may think, you may know her from uh, First Coast News, this and this. And then I'd say, Kate, hey, Katie, welcome to the show. Um, so this and this and that and the other. And then we get to going through all this. And I say, basically, be like, hold up, we're going to take a break here. 
we'll hold that hunt for you. We're gonna take a break. When we come back. We're, we're gonna, you're gonna we're gonna top off on that question, and then we're gonna talk about other things. The drivers hey, We'll be back in just a moment. And then you ain't get the picture here. Katie, you take it away. So I'm no Nostradamus here, but I predict the drop-off line is going to suck. Especially you first-timers. Buckle in. It's going to be great. If you really want to get psyched for the drop-off line, I suggest you go watch some demolition derby tapes. This will get you in the mood. But there are some unwritten etiquette rules here, and I suggest we all get on the same page. Number one, don't speed through the school zone just to be the first in line. That will make you enemies, and it might get your tires slip. Listen, the mom mafia is real, and justice is swift. Number two, don't be a line cutter what do you think you're gonna do put on the harry potter invisibility cloak and like sneak past the line i see you in that van karen and i saw you cut the line number three pull forward it's simple line mechanics god <gasps> number four do not get out of your car this will take everyone behind you from kindergarten cop to terminator if they see that driver door <laughs> open because this is not the time for let me help you tie your shoes oh honey have you packed your bag in here let me brush your hair no you have a five second window stop open your door get out wave goodbye gone that's it number five we don't have to speak just because i made eye contact with you doesn't mean we need to talk if it looks like I haven't brushed my hair yet today. No, Cheryl, I don't want to talk about the book fair. Go away. Here's the deal. You're walking into a battlefield and you are going to see people do things that are so dumb, you don't know how they get through the day. Other parents out there hold up the line and they just don't give a sh. You just have to remember that most of the parents in the drop-off line are tired, frustrated parents with a bit of road rage. But if you really hate the drop-off line, I mean, you could put them on the bus. I hear it builds character. But if you remember nothing else from this video, remember this. Pull forward! I don't think we all know some common sense when it comes to pulling forward. Right. You know what? Let's, let's just throw on the rest. You know what? This hour has been all about driving me crazy. Let's just throw on the rest. Hurricanes. We talked about this one from Katie. We're doing it again. There's nothing more powerful than you. Making your thing happen. Really going... Guys, it is the start of hurricane season. Yay! If I hear the words cone of concern, I think my eye will start twitching. The last two seasons have not been good to us. We had Matthew and then Irma. So whoever said Jacksonville never gets hurricanes, you are full of sh So I'm actually doing these videos from a different car because my last car got destroyed in Irma. RIP Vandal in Malibu. It's fine. It's not like I'm still bitter about it or anything. So if you're going to get ready, let's just do it now. Because the last thing I want to see is when people wait until the last second, and then suddenly you can't find food or water anywhere. The poor guy at Publix, when he brings the water out from the back, it's like a scene from Braveheart of people just like storming the aisle trying to get to that water. Just do it now, and you don't have to worry about it. Because when there's a storm coming, people are like, where are the eggs? Where's the milk? I need bread. What are you guys doing? Are you making French toast during hurricanes? Like, I don't get it. Just go get some canned goods. Get some like Chef Boyardee or something, stock up on some water, and like you're fine. Just put that away in a closet and don't worry about it. And while we're on the subject of hurricanes here, evacuations are for your own safety. But if you mention evacuations, people at the beach are like, I'm not leaving. I'm not I'm leaving! <laughs> Why? You're on your own. If you stay, you're on your own. I'm like, don't get me wrong, I love the beach. But then it's like the storm is upon us and everybody flees across the intercoastal to take refuge over with the townies. Just leave when they tell you to leave. And please be nice to the meteorologists. They are seriously doing the best that they can. It is science. They can't just predict the future. If you can predict a storm perfectly, 10 days out, you know exactly where it's gonna hit and what time, you are a sorcerer and I want you to come work for us. But seriously, the motto I like to live by is unless Deegan is worried, I'm not worried. Because Tim Deegan has been tracking hurricanes since before most of us were even born. The man knows what he's talking about. If I see him get concerned, then I will get concerned. But until then, I'm not panicking. Before idiots, we've seen this before. It's not like a freak.
freak blizzard or something. We have hurricanes that happen. We're a peninsula. We're just hanging out there in the ocean anyway. We can handle this. You know, the rest of the country pokes fun at us because, you know, we have gators that sometimes show up in our backyards and we have some kind of crazy news stories that happen here. But there's one thing that we do know. We know hurricanes. We can do this. I believe in you. And we need to know about evacuation. If you've seen our hurricane specials from years ago in this broadcast, you know how to prepare. You need to know how to prepare for a hurricane. If you don't know how to, we watch that episode. You may not understand what I'm saying here, but we're going to have a throwback Thursday on that come up in June. So if you really don't know, then you should. It's for your own safety. Without that evacuation, you're just sitting there going, I'm not fucking leaving. Go without me. Even if there's a thunderstorm. There's nothing more powerful than you. Making your thing happen. Really going for it. Hey, hey, hey! We got a first timer down here! It is the beginning of hurricane season. I know a lot of people moved to Jacksonville in just the last few years. <coughs> Stop plugging up our roads. <coughs> so I know a fair amount of you watching this have never been through a hurricane. I've been through a bunch. I look like a wet rat in all of them. But if this is your rookie season, this one's for you. First of all, don't believe people who say hurricanes never hit Jacksonville. First of all, false. People told me that all the time when I moved here, and Matthew, Irma, and my flooded car would like a word. So starters, make yourself a kit. You don't need to overthink this. Get yourself one of these, something waterproof that seals. Put some food in it. My personal favorite, Chef Boyardee. You can judge me all you want, but after eating granola bars for days, there's no power and you are hungry as hell, this tastes like a four-star Michelin meal. Stock up on snacks. Because when the power goes out, you have nothing to do but sit around and eat. Go get yourself some jugs of water. Because right before a storm, people storm the aisles like Braveheart, fighting over pallets of water. Oh, and you might want to stock up on a few adult beverages. I'm not saying you need to drink to get through a hurricane. I'm also not not saying that. Next, make copies of all your important papers and your insurance papers. Then take your phone, go around and film your house like you're on MTV Cribs. Trust me, you are gonna want this video when you have to fight with your insurance company. If you hear nothing else from this video, I need you to know these three things. Where you live on a map, the county in which you live, your evacuation zone. None of these three things should be hard, but you would not believe the calls that we get into our newsroom if there is a storm approaching. Carol calls because she wants to know if it's gonna rain at her house and should she evacuate. Well, first of all, Carol, yes. If it's a hurricane, it's gonna rain at your house. It's gonna rain everywhere. Should you evacuate? I can't answer that for you. Does it normally flood at your house when you get a heavy rain? Is there a medical reason like an oxygen tank that you're going to need power? Do you live in an evacuation zone? I can't answer the phone calls anymore that come into the newsroom because I feel like freaking Jerry Maguire. Help me help you. Seriously, know these three things and it will make your life a lot easier. Quick edit, I realized I forgot a couple things. Importantly, if you have a pet, you need to make a plan for them too. If your plan for your pet is to just leave them behind and wish them the best of luck, you need to start finding a new home for your pet because you don't deserve them. And yes, I know that wild animals have survival instincts, but do you think Fifi here has ever had to struggle for a day in her life? No. She doesn't know how to survive a hurricane any better than you do. So take them with you. It's a non-negotiable. And if you're gonna ride it out, make sure you plan on having food and water for your pet as well. Also, don't tape your windows. I don't know who started this nonsense, but this doesn't do anything. If you are actually worried about your windows, board them up. Cool? All right, back to your original video. I could go on for days, but this should get you started. To summarize, hurricane season is as Florida as a python eating a gator. It's just a fact of life down here. It's something we live with. If something serious kicks up, I promise we will be here with you to get you through it. But until then, you don't need to panic. Think of this as your rookie season. And for the love of all things Florida, know your zone. Just know it. You have to know it. <sighs> We're going to throw in a couple more when we come back. That's our viral thing. Stick with this. Are you one of those dudes that gets out of, out of shape in a relationship? 
Does this picture realize this? Let's take a look at the 60 second final break. Watch my space. What? Game time? Game time? Yo, boys, I forgot to tell y'all. I'm going on a date with this girl tonight. Bro, she's mad fine. Uh, Josh, you remember what happened to CJ, right? Shut up. Hey, this is nothing serious, dog. I'm just trying to get in, have a good time, and get out. You know what I mean? Mm, mm hmm Right. We'll see. Well, wait. Bro, when I say that, I mean it, dog. Six months later. Hey, you get some out of the car? Okay. Yo, what's good, boys? Uh huh. We've been together for six months. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Josh! Come here, bro. We gotta talk. What the hell, bro? I know. Okay. Look at you. Look at you, bro. Look what's happening. Are you happy? No, no, I know you're not. Bro, I can't help it. I can't get out. I'm stuck. She's got me stuck. She is not healthy for you, bro. Okay? She needs to go, and she needs to go right now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You're right. I do know. Uh, hey, Lindsay! We're done! Get out of here! Watch too much space. What? <laughs> we back! We back! <laughs> Okay. Uh, you know that come up next week's gonna be the anniversary when COVID the COVID nineteen pandemic hit Texas. But did you ever have to did you worry about the post pandemic traffic? Take a look. Welcome back to the roads. I see we learned nothing while we were away. So you gotta put pants back on and go to the office, which means you're gonna have to commute. I, for one, have missed you all. Do you know how hard it is to talk about the roads when there is nothing going on? I got like 45 seconds to fill every five minutes for two and a half hours. And half the time it's like, roads are great, Ugh, back to you. But you're back now and it's been a while and that's kind of obvious. Half the people out there look like 16 year olds trying to learn how to drive again in the Regency parking lot. How did we forget this skill? Since it's been a while, let's go over a couple of things. Um, well, first of all, 295, people still can't merge. The Harpridge ramps are gone. Buckman gonna Buckman. But a tip of the hat to Five Points, who actually got themselves together and did this. Yeah, the roundabout is actually gone. They fixed it. Listen, I get that it sucks to have to sit in traffic again. I wish nothing more than to be able to Bruce Almighty some traffic. But frankly, rush hour traffic might be less stressful than sitting under the same roof as your spouse for the last 15 months. I'm just saying. So welcome back, commuters. I'm glad to see you on those roadways again. Jacksonville wouldn't be Jacksonville without its wild drivers. That That's a recipe for a disaster right there. For all the Jacksonville out there. I think of Miss Kay Jeffries, who's, who was Jacksonville. I'm not even sure why I'm recording this in the car at this point. It's not like I'm going anywhere. Remember when the ball dropped on 2020 and we all thought that it was going to be a great year? Yeah, we were wrong. We were so wrong. Listen, I'm not going to joke about coronavirus because that is serious. I'm not messing with that. I kind of feel like if you say it three times fast like Bloody Mary, it's just going to appear. Coronavirus, coronavirus, coronavirus. <gasps> So listen to what the doctors are telling you with that. But we're all living this weird shared experience. Y'all were writing me wanting a video, so let's do this. Let's start with work from home and Zoom conference calls. So a tip from me to you. If you're on a conference call and you don't want to be called on, I like to employ the Jurassic Park method. Don't move. Can't see us if we don't move. If you pause long enough, they might just think your internet crashed. And also, stop apologizing if your dog interrupts the Zoom conference call. I want to see the dog. Show me the dog. Frankly, I wasn't paying attention until there was a dog. I need more pets in these conference calls. Speaking of dogs, when we finally go back to work, I'm going to need to bring my dogs with me. Don't blame me. Arnold and Alvin got used to a certain level of lifestyle, and I need to keep that up for them. You know something that I didn't think I would miss? that I really do, driving. And have you seen gas prices lately? Finally, the lowest gas prices we've seen in years, and I've been driving on the same tank since March. It's like we're living in an Alanis Morissette song. Listen, man, I don't make a beat. Don't you blame me. 
I tell you what we all should spend money on when this is over. We all need to make an investment in a bidet. Because obviously we cannot be trusted to manage the toilet paper supply responsibly. Who is hoarding the TP? Coronavirus doesn't cause dysentery. I just, I don't get it. I don't get it. So on top of trying to keep toilet paper in your house, keeping your family healthy, and just keeping everybody sane, now parents suddenly had to be a teacher. Listen, don't beat yourself up about it. No one is expecting little Timmy to be a Rhodes Scholar. Frankly, if your kids can still read by the end of this, you did great. But come August, you better shower teachers with some love. Because now you've seen what they put up with. I say that with love in my heart for children. They are a gift, they are precious, they are our future. But they can be little goblins sometimes. How teachers get anything done in the classroom, frankly, is a freaking miracle. Teachers on those back to school lists in August, this is your year. You ask for anything you want because parents will get it for you. 35 pack of crayons, done. Three hole punch double space paper, all yours. Baby unicorn, we will find one. Just please take the children back. And parents, for Teacher Appreciation Day, I better not see any $5 Starbucks gift cards. You can't even buy one drink at Starbucks for $5. There better be Wine of the Month Club memberships, massage gift cards, maybe both. Depends on how bad your kid is. Before I wrap this up, let me just say, in all seriousness, Doctors, nurses, first responders, respiratory therapists, grocery store workers, delivery drivers, truck drivers, y'all are amazing. Thank you so much for getting us through this. So it seems like we might be in the home stretch of this quarantine. Keep social distancing. Stay six feet apart. For those of you who can't measure, think of it as the length of one Gardner Minshew. Keep washing your hands. And I can't wait to see you all again. Let's get out there and kick some coronavirus ass. All right, we've scratched the service on driving by driving me crazy. Now, tomorrow, tomorrow we're going to put you in the driver's seat with the teens in on hidden camera. Yeah, that's right. You hear me, Mark? We're going to, we're going to put you in the driver's seat with with some hidden cameras and teens as parents watch their teens first time in driving, whether it's sleeping or driving distracted. Here's a sneak peek. It might be the most dangerous part of your child's day and you're not there. When our teens are behind the wheel, how do they do? Cameras in the car reveal the truth. This is probably illegal. And parents will see every moment. That's shocking. Maybe you'd feel better if someone else were driving. But what if that person seemed to be high or drunk? I think you gave myself a couple shots before this. Wait, <laughs> you took shots. Would your child get in the car with this guy? Parents watch as our hidden cameras capture their children's choices unfolding in real time. It's an eye opener, right? Absolutely. Some kids will blow it. I really feel like talking almost. Others will make the right choice. No drinking yes. and driving. How do you make sure your team makes good decisions? Parents can have a tremendous influence on their kids, much more so than they think. Natalie Morales with My Kid Would Never Do That. That's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. That's all the to Give me a break Friday going to Saturday. We'll see you again. We'll see if you give me a break Saturday night. With my kid would never do that. Good night. Stop. Good night, everyone. Stop bullying. Speak up. Concentration, not strength. No jaywalking. No texting, and driving. No drinking and driving. No. No road rage. Beg of y'all. Have a good night.